here's where we are. This whole feeling alone thing, Vivio, you hit it dead on. Attachment, you can call it connection. But very simply, I'm gonna explain what connection attachment looks like. An attachment asks three questions. This is what we're, when we say we don't want to be alone, really, what we're saying is, if I need you, not that I'm a drama queen, not that I always have something going on, but in those moments that I absolutely positively need a person, and you're my go-to person, will you turn towards me and not away from me? Can I get my needs met through you? Two, when I see myself reflected in your eyes, am I good enough? That one is huge. We're gonna talk about all three of these. When I see myself reflected in your eyes, am I good enough? And number three, what matters to me, what I love about myself, matters to you. You happen to love that same thing. I want you to spend a minute, I want you to think about one person in your life, one challenging relationship that you have in your life. Picture this person, see this person, yes, they did not purchase a ticket, but they're here with you. So you can book them, you bring them up, okay? And I want you to think about it. How do they really make you feel? You talk to them and you try and share your day with them. And it doesn't go well. You try and share intimate details with them. And it doesn't go well. It just never goes well. How is it that they're really making you feel? Do you change your behavior with this person? You are passionate and fun and adventurous and curious until you get around this person and all of a sudden you have to become somebody else. When you see yourself reflected in their eyes, are you good enough? Are you good enough? Or do they always want more and more and more and more of you? Not in a positive way, we have relationships that challenge us and force us to grow. But is it, we'll never be on the same level? I'll always have to be saving you? Oh, silly you and your stories again. Is it redirecting you to what's responsible and right and proper? Is there always something that happens in those relationships that just make you feel, you know what? If you have to hang up the phone, if you have to leave the room, if you have to leave that conversation and affirm who you are, then no. When you see yourself reflected in their eyes, you're not good enough. And it's three, what matters to me matters to you. How do we get to know people? You talk to them. You put your heart out there. For all those who want to look gay, you see the nice little diagram that helps you articulate and have some of those conversations, right? So when you begin actually sharing your heart, sharing some of those intimate details about you, does the person gently hold that, or do they totally blow it off? This is the simplest way to explain it. Have you ever talked to somebody, and you, for you, it was really intimate. You were sharing something special. And their response was, oh yeah, because when I went through that, and they totally just, <laughs> what did you say? I'm looking at all these, like, yeah. This is not just romantic. This is how we are living our relationships. Relationships, romantic relationships simply amplify a lot of the issues that we struggle with in our other relationships. Because usually in an intimate relationship, we spend quite a bit of time together, right? I may only see my colleagues for 40 hours a week, if that. So they don't really get to see the intensity of us like our romantic so don't think that I'm solely talking about romantic relationships. I am talking about every relationship that you have. It's just some of you will be pulling from romantic experiences, others from family experiences, and others from as parents. So we miss incredible opportunities because we're heightened. We miss the opportunities because we're full of anxiety, because we fear that we will not be able to form an attachment because we're going to be judged. So therefore, we remove ourselves all together from relationships. What can you do <laughs> to release <laughs> some of the fear and anxiety that you have in relationships? How are you going to stay? The instinct is to run. 
and why are you running? Which area of attachment scares you the most? God forbid if this worked out and this relationship really worked out, where's your fear in those three areas of attachment? There's no fear of success. There's a fear of evolving and becoming and assuming more responsibility and expectation. Because really, it, responsibility comes with that too, right? Mm -hmm. What responsibilities come with our relationships? Commitment. Oh, the C word. Yeah. So I was told, I don't know, but I, so I was told people have commitment issues. What in the world is a commitment issue? Hey, tell me to know your personal business, but tell me about your friends. How many know women who have stuck by the side of someone who was clearly under construction because the expectation was, we're gonna have an awesome relationship when all of this dust settles. This is gonna be great. Safety and security. This is what I am in relationship with you for. To grow and become the best expression of myself. To constantly be challenged and communicate more effectively. Okay? To continue to grow and develop and open up because I have a heart that yearns to be open. I want that glow. That's what I'm in relationship with you for. All the other stuff, I really can't find outside. Now, it would be awesome if there was a one-stop deal, if everybody was an end-all deal. The reality is we're not one-stop deal, end-all deal. I can talk about politics to a certain extent, and after a while, I'm like, okay, can we talk about something else?